Hi, this is Brian Hegney, instructor of Game and Interactive Media Design. Let's go ahead and just jump into 3D Studio Max for the first time. I am going to assume you at least have some, like at least five minutes of knowledge about the user interface of 3D Studio Max. And we are going to go and just, before we begin, we're going to set up a few things um, that you may need to know about. And it's basically saying, hey, what units am I working with? I live in the United States, and for some reason we use feet and inches a lot. But if you started to notice, um, game engines like Unreal Engine, let's say, they're starting to, or they do use um, centimeters as their main unit. And so when I was working in the architecture and urban design field, and when I was using 3D Studio Max, we often used feet and inches. Um, but now that I'm doing a lot of modeling for uh, use in game engines, I'm going to start using centimeters. So what I want to do first is just set up my scene so that when I type in one unit, it actually stands for one centimeter. So I do that under customize in my menu bar up at the top of 3D Studio Max. And I'm going to go to unit setup. And before I, well, this is set to centimeters. That's great. If you click on system unit setup, that's just as important. And you see another little window pops up and it says one unit equals one centimeter. Yours might have said inches at first. I don't know what it said. That's why I want to just make sure that mine says one unit equals one centimeter. Uh, I'm going to ignore this stuff. Yay. And I'm going to make sure my display unit scale is set to centimeters. Okay. You could set it to feet and inches, but let's set it to centimeters. Uh, that's metric and then choose centimeters and then say okay and now that we do that all of our all of our units are going to be in centimeters that's good so when we finally export this table out to a game engine it will come in the appropriate size and scale if you forget to set your size and scale of your system then when you export to Unreal Engine or a game engine your table could be either be like really huge or really tiny and it's just gonna take more time to rescale all of those objects okay let's go ahead and create our first object and what we're gonna be doing is creating a box and that box is going to be one of the planks of the table that we're about to make um, if you look at your command panel this big thing on the right now you can hover your cursor over the dividing line between the viewports and the command panel and look at your cursor turned into a left right arrow thing go ahead and left click and we can drag that out now when we first make a box um, and we're on the create tab we have chosen to create geometry that sphere is highlighted and we are using the drop down menu to select standard primitives um, notice if you choose, oh, let's choose extended primitives. Notice we could create Hydra, an oil tank, Gendron, a ring wave. Uh, maybe it would be cool just to see what happens if you create a ring wave. Ring wave. Just click on that and drag that out. Let go and then, yay, that's kind of cool. All right, I'm going to hit delete because I don't want a ring wave. Um, just wanted to point all of these things out to you. We are using one small component. Um, the standard primitives and we are going to enable box and so when the word box is highlighted in blue I'm gonna left click and drag this to the edge here yay okay now we can make a box in any different viewport for right now you might not know um, exactly which viewport is best to to model in I prefer to create my objects in perspective um, but it also depends on the time and the place and what I'm actually making so let's go ahead and create a box. If you left click in your viewport and drag, left click and drag, you're going to be drawing a square. And you can draw it anyway, right? I'm just going to draw it this way. And then when you let go of your mouse, the next thing that happens is you can move your, your mouse up or down, and that creates the height of the box. Yay. And then you left click to select that height. Now, I'm just going to make a box and then and not care about the size of it I actually don't care at the moment this is how I prefer to model and then I'm going to right click to disable the box creation tool right click yay 
And so notice that when I right clicked, that box was disabled. If you don't right click, um, you could also move your cursor all the way up to this select object tool in the toolbar on the top left. Um, that would also disable the box creation tool. If you don't disable the box creation tool and you like try to select your box by drawing a little ring around it, right? You're just going to keep drawing boxes. I often see students submit assignments where like they have all sorts of boxes just in the background and I can tell they forgot to disable their box creation tool. Okay. And if that does happen, you know, let's say you create some boxes by accident, when you right click to disable box creation uh, tool, just go ahead, left click all these boxes, hit the delete key, hit the delete key, they're gone. All right. Let's go ahead and finish this portion of the video up with looking at how to change the dimensions of this. And this is looking at a new tab, the Modify tab. So next to the Create tab, there's a Modify tab. Click on that. Notice it says Box01. That's the name of the object. Notice this name corresponds with the name over here in the Scene Outliner. And I'm going to actually change that. And I'm going to call that Plank because that will become one of my table planks. And I'm not going to add a modifier. Okay, okay. so it says box here. Now look all the way down here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six main parametric components we could change. Length, width, and height, and then the number of segments for length, width, and height. So notice you can left click and drag these up and down arrows. These are called spinners. These little arrows to the right of the length, width, and height numbers. And you can either left click and release like the top and the bottom one. So if I left click release the top, it kind of just makes that incrementally a little bit longer. You can left click and release the bottom or you can left click and drag. And one cool thing about 3D Studio Max um, is that if I zoom out here, one cool thing, if I left click the top spinner arrow for length, and move my mouse upwards. Notice how I could just keep going up and my mouse goes, you know, to the bottom of the screen and just continues forever. You can continuously do that forever. Um, I'm not going to do that. Okay, there we go. Just to let you know what to do. And just for interest sake, if you cl right click on either this three or this angle or this percentage or this spinner, I'm going to right click the spinner snap tool. Um, oh, that's not what I wanted at all. Right click the three. There we go. That's better. Then I could go to options. Hold on. All right. I'm sorry. It was here. If I right click the spinner snap tool, where these little up and down errors are there. I can call it right over here under general in the middle on the left, there's precision and snap. If I set that snap to like five instead of one and then click on use snap and say, okay, I can now left click the spinner arrows and it goes up or down in increments of exactly five units um, depending. And notice that when I clicked enable in that little options menu it actually enabled spinning spinner snaps and I can just disable that by turning that off by clicking it once again um, so that's how you can enable snaps on your spinners um, and just note let's see the one last thing that I want to point out is if you tap F4 you can see highlights of your segments and so just notice if you enable let's say click the spinner to do two length segments or three length segments three height segments three width segments you can start to see how we can start to add segments here and again toggle that on and off by using f4 and that's toggling f4 and then toggling f3 actually shows you wireframe all right and so what we've done is we've uh, we've modeled the box, or we've added a box, and we've adjusted it, adjusted its length, width, and height using the spinners here in the Modify tab. And we also looked at um, increasing or decreasing the length segments of an object. Uh, next up, we're going to be actually looking at the dimensions of the table and how to model it.